Welcome to episode 2 of Guild Ball Gotchas, where I go through the biggest surprises and powerful combinations in Guild Ball and walk you through how to play around them. Before we get into this episode, I want to point you to the Patreon I just started. For just $5, you can get Guild Ball Gotchas a month before everyone else. This episode features the Pat Cat, a brewer kicking strategy that uses the insane threat range of Scum to generate momentum, dramatically increase the threat range of Tapper, and threaten to win momentum or kill a player. It's worth noting here that the Pat Cat can be done by Esters with slight variation, but the Tapper version is more powerful and more common. Let's walk through a typical turn with the Pat Cat. The Pat Cat is most often seen when the Brewer's team is kicking. The play is always a first turn gambit that involves four consecutive activations. The first of these four activations can be in any of the first three slots, but it is common to see them either start as late as possible, or occasionally we will see Friday activate early. To start, the Brewer player kicks with Tapper. The Alchemist team retrieves the ball with Vitriol and passes it to Harry. The Brewers activate Friday and sprint her up, then use Get Over Here Scum to allow him to dodge 6 inches. The Alchemist player passes the ball a few times to generate momentum, and both players take a few inconsequential activations. During this, the Alchemist player places Harry about 11 to 12 inches from Tapper, well outside his threat range of 9 inches, putting Scum within 11 inches of Harry. The Alchemist player activates a model, then the Brewers activate Scum and charge Harry. Scum does a momentous push, which moves Harry an inch closer to Tapper. We jump to the Brewer's next activation, and Spigot activates and tools up Tapper, then uses the one momentum they got to put up his heroic, Times Called, giving Tapper plus two plus two move. On the Brewer's next activation, they will be able to put Tapper into Harry. The most basic way to counter this play is to stay out of the cat's threat range. But since the cat can go a non-linear 17, that is easier said than done. The other way to play around it is to stay out of Tapper's threat range when you take into account the push from Scum and Times Called, ideally 13 inches away since this will require a double push. Another important step in dealing with the Pat Cat is providing unappealing targets and using defensive stance. Scum charging a 4-1 that uses defensive stance only has a 53% chance to get to his second column and get that much needed momentum. The other thing about this gambit is that the Brewer player really wants Scum to generate two momentum, one for times called, and one to protect Tapper's activation from knockdown and other activation ruining effects. The Pat Cat can be difficult to play around due to its flexibility. Assuming you can stay out of Tapper's threat range, there is a fairly strong Plan B version of the Pat Cat. Here we are joining a game right after Friday has pulled Scum forward. The Alchemist player moves Calculus and hits a bonus time blind onto Tapper, then dodges away with a pass to Catalyst. Harry is now in range of Scum, but Tapper will not be able to get there. So Spigot goes and tools up Scum. Then on the second to last activation, Tapper sprints forward, uses Commanding Aura, and throws a mark target at Harry as further insurance. Midas activates and scores a first turn goal and uses his legendary to snare a bunch of Brewers players. The final activation is Scum charging, trying to gain enough momentum to go first and put a bunch of damage on Harry. Let's talk about models that deal with this play well. Countercharge is enormously disruptive to Tapper's ability to go in here. If Scum didn't generate two momentum, a knockdown is dangerous, and since we are playing with the absolute maximum of Tapper's threat range, a single push can be quite game ruining. Sturdy and good counterattacks are also quite strong against the Pat Cat. Use Benediction to put Stand Firm on Harry, then Harry's counterattack can reliably push Tapper away. If Scum did not generate more than one momentum, range conditions can also heavily hamper the Pat Cat. Things like Ballista's Deadbolt or Harry's Molotov. Other options include using models with Unpredictable to block charge lanes for the Cat and using models with Clone to do the same for Tapper and Scum. The final way to deal with the Pat Cat is Reprisals. The Pat Cat is a gambit that involves the Brewer's player overextending his best piece for serious gain. You are ultimately looking to limit the amount of gain he gets from doing this, then punishing the overextension. If Tapper uses the Pat Cat to kill Boiler, put Filet and Meat Hook into him. If the Brewer player only sent Scum in, use a Reach piece to build momentum off the Cat while managing your threat ranges. Brewers are a strong but slow and static guild. 
Plays like the Pad Cat can help mitigate their predictability and lack of speed. But with careful positioning and an awareness of maximum threat ranges, you can make sure that the cat never takes you by surprise. I hope you have found this episode helpful. If you did, you can help me over on Patreon, where donations as little as $1 help this channel grow. Subscribe to this channel to know the moment I post new videos. Hit that like button, it helps other guild ballers find this video. In the comments down below, let me know if I missed any key counterplays against the Pat Cat, and let me know what gotcha you'd like me to cover next. My name is Vincent Kirkov, and this has been Guild Ball Gotchas.